Okay, let's talk about question number 59. Of the three independent events E1, E2 and E3, the probability that only E1 occurs is alpha, only E2 occurs is beta, only E3 occurs is gamma. Let the probability P that none of the events E1, E2 or E3 occurs satisfies the equations alpha minus 2 beta into P is equal to alpha beta and beta minus 3 gamma into P is equal to 2 beta gamma. All the given probabilities are assumed to the interval 0 to 1, then probability of occurrence of E1 upon probability of occurrence of E3 is equal to, this is what we have to find. So, some equations, some unknowns are involved, we have to manipulate from one equation to another one and have to get the solution from there. Alpha, that is the probability that only E1 occurs, only E1 occurs, that means we can say probability of E1, probability of E2 bar, probability of E3 bar is equal to alpha. Similarly, probability of E1 bar, E2, E3 bar is beta, probability of E1 bar, E2 bar, and E3 that is gamma probability of E1 bar E2 bar E3 bar is P correct from this one I have to calculate probability of E1 upon probability of E3 that is from here I will be trying to get probability of E1 from this one E3 somehow to manage and get that result. If I use equation number 1 and equation number 4, on dividing I will be getting relation in terms of PE and PE bar, means I am able to get from there probability of E1. So, probability of E1 bar or E1 only divided by probability of E1 bar is alpha upon P. Let us write P in terms of alpha beta from the other given equation that is P equals alpha beta upon alpha minus 2 beta. Substitute this value of P, alpha beta upon alpha minus 2 beta, correct. Now, we can take the reciprocal of it, probability of E bar can be rewritten as 1 minus probability of E, simplify we will get probability of E1 as alpha minus 2 beta upon alpha minus beta. This one will be the probability of E1. Similarly, now we need the probability of E3, correct. E3 means we can go with gamma and P. Gamma and P that is we require the value of gamma in terms of alpha beta. So, for that purpose I will be using this equation which has P. P I will find from here alpha beta upon alpha minus 2 beta substitute p over here to get gamma in terms of alpha and beta. So, what we say also p is equal to 2 beta gamma upon beta minus 3 gamma is equal to alpha beta upon alpha minus 2 beta. From here we will get the value of gamma. Then Divide these two equations, equation number 3 and equation number 4 to get probability of E3 upon probability of E3 bar relation, right. Probability of E3 upon probability of E3 bar is equal to gamma upon P. Put gamma and P and solve. On solving, we simply observe that probability of E3 comes out as alpha minus 2 beta divided by 6 times alpha minus beta. My requirement is ratio of probability of occurrence of E1 upon probability of occurrence of E3, correct. So, P E1 upon P E3, this is what I require. Therefore, P E1 upon P E3 comes out as 6. So, the answer to the given question is 6. Let us go for the next question that is the last of this paper question number 60. Okay, Let us consider the last question that is question number 60 of the paper 1. 
a pack contains n cards numbered from 1 to n two consecutive numbered cards are removed from the pack and the sum of the numbers on the remaining cards is 1224 if the smaller of the numbers on the removed cards is k then find the value of k minus 20 i can start this question as the sum of all the numbers on the cards it would have been n n plus 1 upon 2 if we would not have removed the two cards n n plus 1 upon 2 this sum will definitely be greater than 1 2 2 4 that is n n plus 1 by 2 it should be greater than 1 2 2 4 simplifying we can get the value of n by hit and trial n is greater than 49 right n n plus 1 the product of two numbers it is greater than 1 2 2 4 into 2 that gives me n must be greater than 49 let's say for n equals 50 when i put n equals 50 i can see this is 50 into 51 upon 2 n n plus 1 upon 2 that is 50 into 51 upon 2 or it goes 1 2 75 correct this is 25 into 51 correct so that gives me 1275 all right let's say now the number is k as mentioned k plus k plus 1 this will be the sum of the two numbers which are being removed correct this sum will be equal to 1275 minus 1224 so this is equal to 1275 minus 1224 that is 51 or k comes out as 50 by 2 that is 25 therefore k minus 20 goes to 5 so the answer for this question is 5 alternatively we could have started as the number on the card is k so we could have said it like n n plus 1 upon 2 minus 2k plus 1 is equal to 1 2 2 that is create quadratic in terms of n solve it for n when you solve it for n you will see that square root is containing a term which has n equals minus 1 plus minus root of 9801 plus 16k divided by 2 since it is divisible by 2 obviously this has to be odd perfect square 9801 in next number when we talk about it is 10000 which is a perfect square but it's of the even number next one is 10201 which is a perfect square so when i put 9801 plus 16k is equal to 10201 it gives me on simplification k equals 25 or again k minus 20 goes as 5 so this is all about the paper 1 of code 8 thank you